Welcome back to the second video um, showcasing the translator module available on the Sitecore Shared Source Library. So what we're going to do here now is just add in a few more languages. So the way to add a language is to click on Sitecore and then click the control panel. So once this is loaded, um, you want to click on globalization and from here add a new language. So let's, for example, change to French. So click next, next, next. And finish. And what this does is now when you look at your items in the tree, they will all have a French version as well. So this is the recommended way of adding languages for an item. So from here, we can simply, okay, well, let's select a source language, be it English. And once that is done, we just say, okay, well, we want to translate to French. This is the target language we're setting. And of course, we need to add a version because we have no version um, in French so far. So once this is done, I simply click Auto Translate, pick the fields that I want to translate, and click, click Translate. And there we go. This is a video guide on how to use the new translator module that is available from the shared source library for anyone to use. Um, it's just the first version, so it might be slightly buggy, um, but as of right now, it seems to work quite well. Once the module is actually installed, if you go into your versions tab, you'll see a new uh, little command that's um, embedded itself into the translate chunk within the ribbon. Um, to actually use the translation service, we click Translate, and from here we set a source language that we want to translate from. So, so far this item has an English and a Danish version, so we can only translate from those versions. So what we do is click, for example, our source language is English, and then we set our target language as an item. And then from there you simply click Auto Translate. Now, I mean, this can be done on any type of item. Um, it, it works on text fields, um, that is single line text. Uh, it does work on rich text editors as well. Um, but there are a few known issues with breaking the HTML if it's very complex HTML. Um, if it's simple HTML, the translation service will still keep the HTML. Um, and some, sometimes you might just have to click the suggest a fix button to fix simple HTML errors from the translator service. So from here, I'm, just, I'm translating from English to Danish. All I do is click auto translate. And then I check the fields that I want to translate. So for this one, I want to translate the rich text editor. So I click translate. and it will go through and translate it. Now, to check that this has actually worked, what we can do is save that item. Notice that the little red tag has come up. This is what I'm talking about with the rich text editor. So if we click suggest a fix, and click accept, it will usually fix that problem. So from here, let's translate back from Danish to English and see how broken the translation works. Just common practice, auto-translation should not be used uh, for 100% translation. The tool is simply a guide to help users out um, with simple translation. So we set the target 
um, as English, so we want the source as Danish, and then we want to set the target as English. So let's click Auto Translate. The source language is now the Danish version, and this is the English version. So let's translate back. Okay, so you'll see it's actually uh, been perfect. The only thing it's done is broken a bit of the um, formatting within the Rich Text Editor, but as recommended in the um, documentation as well, all formatting should probably be done after the translation has been done. With the Rich Text Editor, simply put all the text that you want in that particular field, then do the translation service, and then after that, you will want to um, put in things like pictures and links and things like that. So that is it. And for further um, FAQs, please refer to the documentation. Thank you.